I'd like to give you all a very warm welcome to this service tonight as we come and pay our respects for the late Donald Alan McLean, as we all know, was a, a missionary in the Church of Scotland, and he served well over in Harris, and he served Lewis as well in, in his capacity as a ministry, uh, in, as a missionary, and as a lay preacher. And we have a lot to give thanks to God tonight for his life, and for the memories we have of his ministry, and the fellowship that many of you shared with him in your life's journey. Uh, this service tonight will be partly in Gaelic and in English, and the family have requested that the authorized version, the King James Version of the Bible, will be read tonight because this was a language that uh, Donald knew so well as he preached, and we want to uh, honor their wishes. Uh, sometimes we might think that it's archaic and old-fashioned, but there's a beauty in the uh, King James Version of the Bible. There's, there's a flow, and it's memorable. And very often when we pray, it's the verses of the King James that comes to us because that's what we grew up with and we knew so well. We're going to begin this service by singing in Gaelic, Psalm 107, verses 28 through to 30. <clears throat> Thank you. 
to ask Reverend James MacDonald to lead us in prayer.
Agus fesgir agus hedyn na hynchia. Agus dochro agus tron na hynchia. Nach magin ych rwy'r gynnyd sy'n sy'n ei anu. Agus grwn chi fi anu rhyr gyda. Mol ag yw dych rwy ar y son yn hyl ach y hwgw gaif. Agus agos o'n rwy'r gyda ych rwy ar. Ha sy'n taing gael y son gyfel gwrwad chofad y cwl ar y chel am y siŵ as yn hwyl. Post y blion o'ch yn bwr. Gos y sgarag yma asad hw gad yng ialog sy'n yw la. Mol yw fi gwt y hyn yw. Y son sy'n. Mae gwt y son nyn ag ag as y ieu am y siw. Y fen y fad lwrys y gwt y fad graag y gilys y gwt y fad cwl ar y strân y chwl y stod am y chai as y fehef am y siw. Ta sy'n dod taen gwt y chrwy ar Y son yn iag yn awsyd o'r gochel. Y ffwyd y chiad cwn o'r chel. Y am ddech yn hyl o'ch hwgw gaif o'ch rwy'r. Nagos na ha cynhau'r gyrw o'r hen a syfau o'ch am y siw. Gwrwad y cynhau'ch o'ch rwy'r yn crwy'r yn y laeth yn y nôg. Yn y laeth yn sy'n o'ch rwy'r fel y rwy'r sy'r y gofidol yn hyfyr bial o. Ac yn y fyst o fyst a sy'n 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 y dymach dy lawn, y gysfyd a dyw yn hyf na'ch iawn a'ch dy gol. Jôn i chi chrwy ar fian eich dyw, gyrwyr sy'n y tyf y chrwy ar y ddyn ies gyrra am y siw. Na'ch beg am y dan ych ddi y cant yr ein, sy'n dwg y mach na ni hyn sy'n ffordd cwyn. Yn y saif rys yn hwyl a ham y siw, y gys an y noi beth y gyn yw. Ian eich yn y chrwy ar Dyr yn hen, a sy'n yw lain siach yw gym y dach la. Sfa tlach gael gyn yw fyg a eis jach gach rwy ar, a gys yw fyg a chwyd jach. Fond sy'n yw fawn ach yn, a hannu gynnau dych rwy ar fwy chi'n blion ach yn bwrwm. A gys yw fyg rwys yn adar ialach yw fyd yr darach y dys yw sodos. Ian yw chiad dych rwy ar yn y siw. Y gys doglach a gwael yn ôl o'ch chi a gynnau am siw. Y gys doglach ael ehan o'r siw cwn o'r unig fys. Y dianaf yn y glest yn y sên. Cain i chi ddyn hyl o'ch eich rwy'r na ffat y gys na liad. Sy'n hany gwtsad gada hany gynnau o'ch rwy'r. Y gys y siw rwyd y hap magyn. Gyn lany gwt y gys y liad. Ar crwy y gys ar jalaf gwbia. A sy'n gan cwrdd yn ôl gwyl i'n hymyl o'n ych rwy'r at y chŵr ym hen, o dda cŵr ym eich yn hyo nhw y gyn. Fi am ych ag enni yn ysio y fi sain dychlwys, y fi lef yn y ffyr yn hwyd gain clwos y chlonig ych rwy'r. Gyda dda hag yn hyo nhw ry gyda ar ein yn nŵc am y siw. Eistio mynd ysio ni het gyda. Blawr i a sîg o biach. Rha phobl nŵf, sna pili gata dîst, i gewn si am y jag. O gor yn gwg gras fawr o'ch rhywia, jael rhych dy gynnwys tog o'r dog loch hen. Egeus dy spirit gor o gael jantyn. Sy mae i gyn gwg gras fawr na gwt y sy'n i fi gra, na fi smyn iach ag am y siw. Na chael rair y dohol nŵf y ffyn. Glan sy'n i am y ffwrd na rair dy y sŵr ag yna am y siw. Ygys gynglon i gysyn, na'r nymyl o'n ach gyda hawl glod o'ch yn nynio. Nef i chywa, ygys glod i chywn ysia. Ygys hawl nysia, dol o'r siach gan yn oes, sy'n y fwynys gad o lwag hen. O chrwyar, ian o'ch dyw. Cwyd yma gan yw o'n. Ylys na'ch bysyn yw'r dde o'n yn hyf y mwy, gan y chlar o'ch am y siw. Fan a'ch byd o'ch ys tydig. Ian eich y ffochgol y fysod y lefus, gor yn gwg gras fwyd, a nhw'n cdi ysd y sgach ddi ysd. Our first reading is in the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, at Psalm 116, verse 1 to 19. Let's hear the word of God. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. 
the sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got, up, got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech ye, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, ye our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with, with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosened my bonds. I will offer to thee sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. And then a few verses in Matthew's Gospel, at chapter 4, from verse 18 to 22. This is a calling of the first disciples by Jesus. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other, t other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship of Zebedee. Their fathers mending their nets, and he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Amen. May God bless to us the readings of his holy word. Holy Scripture. There is a world of difference between the death of a believer, of a follower of Jesus, and someone that isn't. And when you enter into someone's home where death has taken place, and that was the case on Saturday in Donald Allen's house, it wasn't a house that was in tears and broken and falling to pieces. There was a peace in the home because the Lord was welcome in that home. The Lord was honored and worshiped in that home because of Don Allen's faith and his wife and these members of his family. And these words were so true that there was a time in his life that when he came to know Christ that he loved the Lord because God had heard his prayers. He had been walking in darkness like many of us, all of us have. But when the Lord spoke, when the Lord revealed himself to him, he became a, a disciple, a believer, and a follower of Jesus. And his heart and his life was changed. He was transformed in the twinkling of an eye. And he followed the Lord faithfully and with great loyalty over many, many years until his passing breath on Saturday morning. He spent his time in the service of the Lord. His waking moments in reading scripture and praying and fellowship with other people. Many people in this church tonight have been blessed by his fellowship. As he sat down with each other, as he talked about the Lord, as he witnessed to you, as he maybe brought a word of se in season to you, he never missed opportunities because he was sold out for his God, for a Savior who transformed him. God heard his prayers. And there are prayers we believe that are still to be answered in the coming months and years, however long we are in this world. Because God's not deaf. God's not disinterested in what we say. But he hears the cries of our hearts. And there are prayers yet to be answered that Donald prayed over many years. For family, for friends, for people he knew both here and over in Harris. 
What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. There was a day when he professed faith for the first time. What a wonderful thing that is to remember the body and blood of Jesus Christ as we come to a time of communion. And many times he sat at the Lord's table in faithfulness and honoring the person and work of Jesus Christ. And on Saturday morning, the scripture says it all here, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. A man of faith, a beloved husband and father and grandfather was called home to his eternal rest. And where he is just now and what he is before, the world does not understand. No, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. He is fully at rest and free from pain and sorrow in his physical body. And he's before the presence of Jesus Christ, whom he loved and followed and served over many, many years. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, we read about the calling of the first disciples. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You know, when you're called as a Christian to follow Jesus, you're not called just to be sermon fodder for a minister, but you're called to serve the kingdom of God and the purpose of God. And that service can come in many ways. For Donald, it was to be a missionary, a home missionary. For others, it might be a lifetime of prayer. For others, it might be those who are evangelists who testify, who share the gospel. For others, it might be the gifts of hospitality, for making people welcome in a church or welcome in your home where you just share the Lord with them. But Donald was called to preach the gospel. And he did that faithfully. Dolly was telling me just the other day when I was in visiting that his, his memory was unbelievable. He could remember sermons from preachers down through the ages. He could quote passages. He could remember points in a sermon. He had a fantastic memory. But it was his love of Scripture. It was his love of Jesus that shone out. And that was seen in his ministry, in the faith that he wanted to pass on. The Apostle Paul tells us in Corinthians, for what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. And his life was passing on what he received from Jesus. The living bread. Life, light, hope, joy, peace, love. He wanted to pass that on to others. That was his greatest desire, that others might come to know Jesus Christ. And this is a legacy that is left behind. Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And you are like that tonight here in this church. For this dear man, for this lovely family, who are mourn, who mourn, and who are heavy hearted at this time, but there's also joy in them. Because they know that this is not the end. That when we close our eyes in death as Christians, we open our eyes to an endless eternity. For Jesus outshines everything in heaven. Mansions will glisten in the streets of glory. Happy reunion in streets of gold. Angel choirs singing glad praises forever, but Jesus will outshine them all. And that is a portion for the people of God. To be with him is far better. We love our families dearly. With our whole being, with our whole heart. But we love Jesus even more because he first loved us and he forgave us all our sins and all our faults and he called us to be his people. I'm going to ask now Jonathan Baxter, the minister of APC, to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, we bow this night before thine eternal Majesty, and we acknowledge that 
thou art the uncreated one who is, who was, and who is to come. And in thy hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. It is to thee that we owe our existence. Thou hast given us our days upon this earth, having set in eternity when we would come into this world and when we will depart. And thou hast made us for good and glorious purposes, to know thee, to enjoy thee, to glorify thee. But we must confess how far short we have come of this, our high calling. And that in our first parents, Adam and Eve, we have fallen into sin and brought upon ourselves the wages of sin, which is death. And we rightly deserve thine everlasting punishment for our sin is against thee and thee alone. We have lived cut off from thee in rebellion against our Creator. And how we thank thee and how we marvel at thy wondrous love for undeserving sinners, that thou made a plan of salvation, sending thine only begotten Son into this world, that he might go to the cross of Calvary and there in unfathomable love for his people. He offered up his life as that once for all atoning sacrifice to pay for the sins of all those who will trust in him. We thank thee for the work that he has done, a work that is finished, a work that is complete and perfect. We thank thee that he is now risen from the dead and what hope that has brought to our hearts through this knowledge. We thank thee that he now reigns on heaven's throne and that he is now building his church, calling sinners to himself. That all over this world, men, women, boys and girls are discovering the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. We thank thee that he is one who is not only willing to receive those who come to him, but it is his delight to do so. And we thank thee how there came into the life of thy servant, Donald Allen. We thank thee how thou called him to thyself and called him into thy service and for his years spent in this way. We Thank thee that thou can still use the seed sown by him many years and even decades ago. And we ask that thou wilt use it, that thou wouldst cause it to take root into the hearts of those still on this earth that heard his preaching. And that thou wouldst cause it to flourish and blossom into spiritual life and fruit. We Thank thee for the testimony that he leaves behind and ask that thou wouldst be with those who, who knew him, that they would think upon his life and that truly they would see that in the heart of the believer Christ is all in all. We ask therefore that this night thou wouldst draw near to this grieving family and that thou wouldst minister thy word of comfort to them. We pray for Dolly and we thank thee for the health and strength she has and ask that thou wouldst be with her in these days ahead in the emptiness of the house with one place missing and that she would know 
thy comfort and strength. We pray for the children, asking that thou wouldst be with Isabel, Sandy, and Ewan, and indeed their spouses and families, and ask that thou wouldst comfort them, that thou wouldst draw near, and that they would know thy presence and thy help in, in the difficult days ahead, that they would have that sense of the everlasting arms underneath them, bearing them up, and that they would be granted precious memories of Dol Allen to comfort them in the days ahead. We pray for all the sorrowing grandchildren this night and ask that I would be with them and minister to them, that they would remember the many stories they heard at his knee, and that this would indeed be a source of solace to them. We thank thee that there is one in heaven who understands, one who walked this earth and knew the, the fallenness of this world, knew what it was to suffer and to sorrow. And we thank thee that we can go to him, the Lord Jesus, that there is for the believer, even in heaven, a sanctuary where we can take our wounded hearts and there we can know the Savior wraps up his people in his loving arms. We pray that thou wouldst help each of us at this time to think upon our own eternity, to remember how fleeting our lives on this earth are, and that when the voice of the eternal speaks and summons us from this world, there is nothing we can do to prevent it or to delay it, for our times are in thy hands. Help us, therefore, to remember the day of judgment when we will stand before our Creator to give account. Help us to see the emptiness of our lives outside of Christ, that we have no good deeds to offer to Thee for our salvation. Help us to see we are at Thy mercy and therefore to simply surrender our lives into Thy hands in faith, knowing that the Savior has done it all and will receive all who come to him. We ask that thou would help us then to think upon our own mortality this night and that we would seek to make provision not only for this world, but for the world to come. Asking, O living God, that thou would go before us, pardon our sins, bring comfort, bring strength, and that truly thou wouldst be glorified this night and into tomorrow as thou art worshipped and thanks is given thee for the life of thy servant. Please go before us now. We ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. The funeral service will be tomorrow here at 11 a.m. and uh, the procession at 11.30. And please uphold and continue to uphold in your prayers, Dolly Isabel, Sandy Ewan, uh, and the wider family at this time. We're going to conclude uh, in our worship by singing in English in Psalm 27, the Lord's my light and saving health, whom shall make me dismayed. My life strength is the Lord of whom, then shall I be afraid. Verses 1 to the end of verse 5. The Lord's my light as
benediction if you can allow the family to leave the church first of all let's stand please now may grace mercy and peace from god the father god the son and god the holy spirit one god may he rest upon us and remain with us and be with all whom we love until jesus comes and he calls us himself amen <laughs>